Hey everyone, it's Jared from Drumio and author of the best beginner drum book. And today I'm here to give you an exclusive lesson from our new book. Now, if you do have it, you can go ahead and turn to page 136 because today we are going to talk about some lead hand independence. Now this is from the section within the book called the Limb Independence Builder. Now as you know, we have four limbs, at least most of us do. I've seen some incredible drummers play with less, some of them much better than I can play with all four, so I'm always very impressed. But we do have four limbs, most of us, like I said, and we need to learn how to do what we want with this hand, with this hand, with this foot, this foot. You know, when we create beats, when we create fills, we maybe want to put the bass drum at a certain place and we need to have the independence to allow us to do that. So in this lesson, we're just going to talk about our lead hand independence. So in this case, it's my right hand, right? Now many of you are left-handed, so in that case, your lead hand independence can be your left hand over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a few different exercises that are within the book. Now it's not only about just learning exercises, it's about uh, learning where to actually apply these within music. And so one thing that really got me interested in learning some lead hand independence was listening to Carter Beauford from the Dave Matthews Band. And within the book, we provide musical examples, uh, kind of a little like uh, at the end of each chapter, we give you some musical examples of where to find ideas that are similar to this. So it's not only about learning exercises, but it's about applying them to real music. And we're gonna work through different examples to get your lead hand going and doing whatever you want it to do. So the, the bass drum and the snare drum are simply gonna be doing this. And on exercise one, the lead hand is gonna be playing on all the up beats or the off beats, which is on all the ands. So if you're counting, it's one and, two and, three and, four and. So I'm gonna play it nice and slowly for you at 60 beats per minute. So to develop that, just start nice and slow, maybe even just isolate the lead hand. and Just count along with the metronome. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. Until you get that really comfortable. And then start maybe putting in just the snare drum, and then put in just the bass drum, and slowly build the groove. You know, if you're a new drummer, I remember what it was like to start out. I remember developing these first levels of independence, especially getting away from your right hand always wanting to do exactly what your right foot's doing, or your, your lead hand always wanting to do exactly what your bass drum foot's doing. You know, my beginning journey sounded like this. Right, so everything wanted to go together, and I could not seem to separate those, and so these exercises are really good for that. So the next one we're gonna do is gonna utilize an eighth note and two sixteenth notes. And we're gonna be playing one and a two and a three and a forty and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two. So just really get comfortable with that when you first start. And this is my favorite one of all of these, to be honest with you. So let's try it at 60 beats per minute, and I'll show you how it sounds. So the next exercise is gonna kind of build on these 16th notes, but we're just gonna kind of shift around where they're located. So instead of going one and a two, we're gonna do the first three 16th notes of each count, and we're gonna shave off the ah of every 16th note count. So instead of going one and a two, we're gonna go one e and, two e and, three e and, one. And 
Let's try it at 60 beats per minute. Now number four is one I still struggle with myself. It's again, just moving these 16th notes around. So we're hitting the first two 16th notes of each count, and then the last 16th note. So we're dropping the and of each beat. So it would go one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E, a three E and a four E. And a one E and a two E and three E and a four E and a one. Let's see how it sounds at sixty beats per minute. And number five drops the downbeat of each count. So we're taking off the one, the two, the three, and the four. And we're simply going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And you can see how I'm counting out loud when I do this. It makes it so much easier to learn. So if you've got this book and you're working through it, Go slowly and count out loud when you're first learning new exercises. So here it is at 60 beats per minute. So, if you're looking for a clear path to gaining momentum behind the drum set, really falling in love with this amazing instrument, I hope you'll order your copy of the best beginner drum book. Now, to end this session off, what I want to do is take some of these exercises we've learned and just start exploring the drum set with them. Because right now, they are simply exercises. They're not really anything musical. They're in their most basic form and you simply just kind of put it together, but now it's time to do something with it and to create. So this is unrehearsed, but I'm simply just taking the exact same exercises and moving them as different orchestrations randomly around the drums to see what I come up with.